Alrighty, what is up though? Hello, so I have not, I say like and so a lot, so live with it. So, hello, or alrighty, or hello everyone. <laughs> I can't think of another word. I unfortunately don't make these as often as I should. I should do better. I'm supposed to have a channel. I should do much better. I don't. I'm watching the first season of Martin. I'm sorry. It was just <laughs> it was like back then, it was funny, but looking at the reruns now and how they look, the dude with the Jerry Curl, oh my god, the red outfit and the Jerry Curl. <laughs> it's, it's it's crazy. It's hilariously funny. <laughs> like he's in the bathroom with Otis and the Jerry Curl in the red outfit with the um with the zebra stripe shirt on. <laughs> I'm like, what were we wearing in the nineties? Oh my god. So Welcome back to my channel. What's my name on here? Diary is a diary. Am I am I diary of my black? Yeah, I'm diary of a mad black woman on here. Because I'm something else on Instagram. I didn't use that name. So follow me on Instagram. I think it's Black Teachers Matters. 535455. Follow me here, Diary of a Mad Black Teacher. Follow me on TikTok. Diary of a Mad Black Teacher. So follow, 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 follow. Hello. So I try to keep my stories as anonymous as possible because I don't want anybody to say, I'm talking about day child. I have been teaching for a very long time. So I am talking about a mishmash bagash of a bunch of students that I have dealt with over the years. And what's unfortunate is that in 25 years, not only has the behavior been similar, it has amped up to a thousand. So what I saw in one or two kids 25 years ago, I'm seeing in all the kids now. So that's the only change. The behavior has been there. It's everybody now. So if you ever watched my stuff from any school, any space, first of all, if you've ever felt insulted or called out or identified <laughs> by anything I've said, then yeah, you probably did it. Like, I don't call names, I don't say schools, and even if you know me and know where I work, I don't say your school, I don't say your name, I didn't say what city, because I've lived in more than one place, I've worked in more than a thousand places, and I met a million and one people. So, I can't, <laughs> put it like this, you can't, if you're a person who was walking outside today, and I saw you walking outside, I say, hey, there was a man walking outside today, you can't sue me for saying that, because it was a million people walking outside today. So, I mean, come on. It's the same thing. I have dealt with a lot of children and behaviors over the years. I am describing behaviors and actions. I am describing, you know, my day, my job. I'm, <laughs> so, if you feel like, oh, I'm, if you feel like I'm giving identifying information, I don't think that I am. Because even if you know me and you think you know where I work, I've worked so many places that you could be out of, you could be wrong. Like, you could be thinking of me from where I worked 10 years ago, and I've worked three places since then. So, <laughs> well, the point is, if I don't hard identify you, <laughs> I don't see how you have recourse. But you know how to, you know how today's world works. So, so I'm back on here. What time is I'm already at three minutes just babbling on. I, I just remember a time when somebody said, well, if somebody knows you, they know where you work, they know who you're talking about. How? How when I didn't say your name? <laughs> how how when I've had the same experience in about 10 different places how do you know who I'm talking about but anyway okay mm, okay okay so oh my goodness me so a lot has been going on and again I should do better with making these a little closer together you know <laughs> I tried to make one New Year's but I just didn't you know what I'm saying it's like I just didn't I just didn't I tried to make one at the beginning of the year it's like February and we're going we're finally on winter we're on midwinter break. Christmas winter break. That was in December. And I was going to make something then and I didn't. <laughs> but now we're on midwinter break in February. So I get a whole week to just, whoo, just sleep, just, just be things, just do things. I don't know. So I had planned to go to Vegas, but I found out I was getting a tax refund. So I said to myself, Hmm, how could I use that knowledge to work for me? <laughs> and so I decided to move my trip to spring break. And I'm not going to Vegas for Vegas. I'm going to Vegas for the day trip to the Grand Canyon. So 
I'm not going to Vegas for Vegas. I'm going for the day trip thing. And I'll make sure I have on my compression socks and my comfortable shoes. <laughs> Drink plenty of water. Take my energy pills. Because it's not climbing. Like you're going to be, there's a certain, they're going to drive you to a certain part of the Grand Canyon where you can look. You know, so you won't be climbing at all. So um, it's a tour. You'll be on a bus with about 16 other people. And um, I just spent like hours just going through all the reviews and going through all the information. And, you know, I'm even going to call them. I just, you know, I'm going to ask them, you know, um, you know, I mean, now they do say that there's no, um, there's no wheelchair lift on, on, there's no wheelchair lift on this tour. So if you are in a wheelchair, they can't, they can't accommodate you, which I think is bold, but I'm sure there are tours that can, it just on theirs, it can, it's a small tour. So it's like $179. They pick you up at like 10 a.m. Because it's like 7 a.m. 10 a.m. I would rather be picked up at 10 a.m. Like I'm not getting up that early to go to the Grand Canyon. <laughs> no. So it's going to be like 10 a.m. to like 8 p.m. They take you to the Vegas sign. They take your picture. They take you to the painted rocks. You know, um, the painted, you know, painted rocks. It look like, they look like ice cream cones or something. Somebody put in the middle of the desert. They get the Hoover Dam, and then they take you to the Grand Canyon. So, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. So, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to live through it. <laughs> I'll make sure I get on my compression socks and some comfortable shoes. So, I'm only going for a few days, and I'm going to Vegas for that because, like, I don't want to fly all the way to – it's like I don't want to take – you know, like, I want to do two things at once. Like, I mean, of course I'm going to see Vegas when it's Vegas, so I'm going to see a little bit of Vegas. I like to do two things at once, but I don't want to spend the night at the Grand Canyon. That's the thing. There is actually packages where you can spend the night there. I don't want to spend the night there. I just want to see it and come home. <laughs> so the point is, like, well, can't you just take a trip to Arizona where it is? I don't want to stay overnight somewhere. You know, you can't just fly to Arizona for a few hours and come back. You, you would have to stay overnight. So I prefer to stay overnight in Vegas. So... I fly to Vegas on a Sunday, go on a trip on the Monday, and come back home on like Tuesday, Tuesday evening. So I'll get a chance to do some things in Vegas, not much, but I've been to Vegas in 2006, 2009, 2012. And even though there have been some changes, I'm sure, I've been to Vegas. I've seen it. <laughs> like, it was nice. Okay, but I, I like it. So I'm good. So I would prefer to stay somewhere that I'm familiar with, and I'm not familiar with staying anywhere in Arizona. And so there are like, and there's it's actually something I want to do. There are campsites that you can stay at in the Grand Canyon. That is something I want to do, but I don't want to do that by myself. That's as a campsite. That's outside. Like I don't want to do that. So it's like I want to go. I want to see it and take me back to Vegas and put me in my hotel, please. <laughs> so I feel like I can do that. So that's my plan for March. And then I'm going back to Paisley Park. I want the whole tour this time. See, there's like it was like a seventy five dollar ticket, and then it was like a hundred and something dollar ticket, and then it was like this two hundred dollar ticket, and so I'm gonna do the two hundred dollar ticket because I want the whole shebangity bang. <laughs> I want the entire, I want the downstairs, the second floor, third floor. I want all the, the background up. I want all the things. <laughs> so, and that would be my last. I mean, you know, and then the see after that, you know. <laughs> so I did go last year, and I did do seventy nine dollars, and the hotel I stayed in was very nice. But I drove. I'm trying to fly this time. So I want to fly. Um, and yeah. So that is my plan to do that in May. I had, you know, I pushed everything back. I never get it. I know I'm bad one, but I never get a tax return. So when I heard I was getting one, it was a few hundred dollars. I mean, it was like, okay, it was like $500. I'm like, wow, what happened? You know, and they, they took too much money from me. I'm like, hmm, let me, let me call my job. And then when we get back from work, <laughs> back from break, like, are y'all taking too much taxes? Because when, when do I get a refund? I don't have anything or anyone to claim so, but me. And I usually owe or get nothing. I, I, I Put it this way, I never get nothing to call home about. I never get anything that's, like, spendable. <laughs> like, 100 bucks or 50 bucks, I, never much. But this time, they took 500 That was too much for me. <laughs> like say what <laughs> like do I need to call my job like what y'all been doing like well, why are you taking money from hello because would it be a thousand dollars next year like you took five hundred dollars too much this year 
Well, next year it'll be a thousand dollars too much. Like, what are y'all doing to me? Like, let me, let me, let me go check my, <laughs> my, my deduction, my situation. It's like, why are y'all taking so much money from me? Why are you taking so much money from me? Excuse me. But anyway, <laughs> so, so I figured that would be a nice little piece of change to have in your hand when you go on your trip. So I moved everything. So I had a trip plan for this month. I had some plans for next month. I had some plans for the month after that. Like I have some things planned for like every other month. So, so I says to myself, self, you know, push everything back so you can go with that money in hand. So that's what I'm going to do. So, uh, work has been work. I just don't have anything else to say or give about work. And I just wish I did. I wish to the heavens I did. It's the same old tune. It has been the same old tune. It's difficult. And you know, I'm going to say this. These, I'm not saying these children fight or are violent. But I'm here to tell you sometimes apathy can be as violent as fighting. To be in a class full of people who not only not want to be there, but not want to learn. And because they don't want to be there, no one to learn. They don't give their all to anything. They don't. They really don't. I'm sorry. Of I, I have two classes and each one's 20 kids. And maybe maybe five of them per class are really there giving their all. Everyone else is there tired, tired, stressed out, anxiety filled, undiagnosed, heads on the desk, don't want to do it. And don't do it. So whatever is going on in their lives that have them so checked out from their education, I don't know. Uh, and are they violent? No. But are they disruptive? Yes. Do they play and goof off a lot? Yes. Are they apathetic? Absolutely. Do they not listen? Nope. But then do they cry about the low grade? Yep. So. And it's been going on since I've been in this district. And this is my fourth year in the district. So. Mm. It's my fourth year in the district. And they just. But want to A, like, I keep saying, you don't want that. And they do want a good grade. I, you know what? I don't genuinely, my heart, want to win, you know, the, the decathlon or triathlon. I don't want to win a marathon. You know why? Because I'm not doing any of the work to do that. Now, I might have some small little things fly by night dream in the back of my head of doing something that great. But I don't really want that because I'm not doing the work to do that. You can't possibly turn in incomplete assignments, no homework, um, do not listen, not hear, absent, sleepy, tired, and not listen to a thing I say and say you want a high grade. You're not doing anything to accomplish that. And I'm not trying to put you down. I'm simply saying your effort ain't matching your dreams right now. <laughs> so. I know you want to be the top, one of the top students in this class, but also coming in sleeping every day ain't the way. So what you want and what you're doing, it don't match up. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's the same. It really, and I would like to say it got better because, you know, we're no longer in the pandemic years. It, it's not. They're trying to play the same game. They got passed for nothing for two years. And last year with the fourth grade teacher and this year with me, I'm doing fifth grade. They're doing the same thing. They want the same thing. And then the parent, I can't believe they grades are so low. I mm, well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not fixing it. I'm not, I'm not low scoring them for nothing. They don't have, they're not finishing anything. And when they finish it, it's not right. And then no matter how many ways I show them, they won't listen to me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do. Like, I talk to you, I talk to them, we go over, we have the conversation, I will walk them through everything, you know, we, you play the audio, you play the video, you do everything you can to try to get them to understand, you have them do discussion, they don't, I think it's a lot of undiagnosed things in my room, though, like, I really believe it's a lot of undiagnosed things, especially with some of the people who can't copy from a board, who can hardly read, they can hardly write, I mean, like you see their handwriting, and it's, it's, you know, it's like you're 10 years old. Your handwriting should be on the line. I shouldn't see your name look like this on a piece of paper. Your name should look like this on a piece of paper. So 
so to be 10 and your name is your letters up and down and bouncing around on paper yeah so it, it was definitely some motor skills missing as well as some foundational skills missing and they're really missing like they do not remember to do these things when they're writing or working and it's like so you try not overstress you try not to be too hard on them because they are they are acting exactly the way they've been designed to act you know i always say what what the problem with the children in these society are the the adults they are acting the way they have been designed to act and behave they're behaving exactly the way they have been designed to behave <laughs> so and then looking at me like i'm out my mind when i don't give out <laughs> rewards for existing because you know that's what they got from those to those pandemic years Oh, thank you for logging in. They log in on their phone, go to their computer and play their game all day and then call you later and ask you to tell them to, tell them to work. No. You were you according to, according to my screen, you were logged in class all day. Oh, I wasn't listening. I was doing something else. My mama had me doing something else. Okay, well. You were an absent. Well, can you please just tell me what we did? You weren't according to the attendance log, you were an absent. You know, go on to Schoology, find the assignment, look at the directions. There's a video, there's some audio with it. Give it a try. But no, I'm not going to say anything because according to the law, you were in class today. So they weren't, and that's what they did for two years. That's what they did. <laughs> they just logged in whenever they felt like it on their phones. Didn't do anything. And then the teacher was supposed to give them three and four. We were supposed to give them two and three and four chances to make stuff up. So they didn't. They didn't come to class originally. They didn't do anything in class originally. They made it up later. And then if it wasn't right, they kept asking you, could they do it over and over again? And then, of course, they were cheating because somebody at home was telling them the answer. So now they're back at school for real, doing the real work in front of you. Can't do any of it. Can't do anything you ask. You know, and they are really sitting here asking you to, can we just work together to give each other the answers so you're cheating? That ain't cheating. That's an assessment. It is. You can't take an assessment together. They won't be cheating. So you don't know what cheating is. But if I know the answer and I can help them, then you're cheating. And I can't say to them out loud, most of you don't read well. So it's a bad idea to work together. Like I can't say, I keep I keep trying to give them examples. If I think two plus two is five and you think two plus two is five, I don't think we would be the right couple to work together. Like I try to keep it as simple as possible, but I don't want to break any hearts and they be like, everybody's reading ability is not where it should be. Y'all help each other do what? <laughs> do what? Do what? And they do, they do. They, they it was cheating. They wanted because I one little girl was claiming this other boy was bothering her, right? And so she wanted to move her seat. And so when she moved next to who she wanted to move to, that girl kept telling her the answer. I'm like, as long as I'm black, you'll never sit next to her again. She was just helping me. She was helping you cheat, babe. That's why you wanted to move. Now I'm gonna move him because he was bothering you. But you have to go back to your regular seat because you sat next to her so you could copy her. And I'm looking at the girl she's copying. Don't let people use you. Do you understand people will use your brain power and still not be nice to you? <laughs> so she got mad because she don't know what she's doing and she want to move next to her friends and her friend. Help, but she was just helping me. No, you guys are cheating. Stop. <laughs> I wasn't cheating on her. She would just help me. She just pointed to answer on your page. I saw her. So you have to move. I had to move her. She was just telling me where it was. She told you the answer. Like, why do you all, like, first of all, <laughs> y'all both about to get a zero if you keep arguing the point with me. She pointed to the screen and told you the answer on what you was working on. I'm standing right behind y'all. So that's why I'm moving her. Like, no, so that's what they did. They sat at home and somebody helped them cheat through their work. And so they got all these grades that they didn't earn. You know, so when they came back to real school, them grades look real different. <laughs> So now they back at school for real, for real. Because even being back at school last year, I don't know what happened last year. I'm looking at their great poor cars from last year like, no, nah, this ain't right. Because then you look at their um, iReady scores and it's like, this is right. 
Like based on my ready, this is exactly what I'm seeing in class. If I look at the last year report card, like, no, nah, that ain't what I'm seeing. No, it ain't. No, no, no. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> so anyway. Same old story. And it's like, y'all notice the story doesn't change. And I wish it did. You know, yes, I have a few good kids. Yes, they work hard. Yes, I'm proud of them. Yes, I like them. You know, I like all my students. I don't dislike the kids, but it's just like, they're just real hard to work with because a lot of them have given up. And they don't understand energy. They don't understand that when they come in the room and they're defeated and they're angry and they're sad and they're mad all the time, they're making that whole room a very down place to be is all I can say you know we try to make it fun or do fun things and it just it's it's not it doesn't last you know like I'm so happy we have this week off I need a time I need some rest I was about to fall apart like I really was my whole body was on its last leg like please I need to go on break and like like I took a day before we went on um, Christmas break because I just couldn't make it we we, we went to the 22nds I couldn't make it (laughs) I just really could not make it. Like, so I had to take a day before that. And I was almost going to take a day now. And I just said, no, nah, I'll push yourself through. But it's like now, because it's just, they're so, they've given up. And I've never met so many children who've given up on themselves. Like at 10, I don't know what it meant to give up on anything. Like they really don't. They don't sleep. They don't eat well. They don't, they don't study. They don't do their work. I wish I didn't have to give homework required to give home and I went swear to God I wish I could go against that. Like I really wish. <laughs> like please stop requiring homework. I just want to give it up. I'm so tired of lies. I'm so tired of people coming to me. Especially parents. Uh I, I I found his homework package. Can he turn him in from three weeks ago? Girl bye. From the last quarter and that quarter is over? No, there's no place to put that. I've had to tell parents over and over again, once you got a report card, that quarter's closed. There's nothing I can do with that. Like <laughs> You know, and I, and I try to give them the leeway. Like, the children don't bring themselves to school. So if, you, if there was a reason that you couldn't get them here, whatever they had to do, that they, they're not responsible for. They're responsible for the work they do when they're here. So if you miss something because the kid wasn't here, okay. I'm not going to hold that against you. That's not the child's fault. Meanwhile, coming to me with two and three and four, we go to work. I can't do that. I don't even have the time or space for it. If the quarter is over, it's over. You know. You know. <laughs> And anyway, please allow them to make up anything they miss. Uh, we have two makeup days per quarter. When we get to that day, they'll be able to make up some own work. Otherwise, no, because they're absent so much, we always be going back to make things up. And no, I can't do that. <laughs> so I'm not trying to be a jerk, you know, but it's like you want them to make up something from September and it's February. Girl, that, them quarters is gone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Anyway, so well, I got a lot going on in my life. It's a lot going on in our family. I don't know if anybody wants me to talk about it though. I don't. If I don't, if my sister watches, I don't know if she wants me to say about it. I don't want to say nothing, anything inappropriate that anybody wants me to say. Um, I just saw on the news there was a shooting at Joel Olstein's church. Joel Joel Olstein or Olstein Olstein? I can't say it right. The shooting at his church, like, dang, what's happening? Shooting at the the Kansas City Chief Parade? What are we doing? Y'all, what are we doing out here? Can somebody please explain? Like, what is happening? Why are we just going outside shooting at the world? Like, what is going on? You just, if you want to off yourself, off your damn self. Why are you offing other people with you? Just rude. I can't stop anybody from harming themselves. That's your body. Meanwhile, why are you taking the rest of us with you? How can we can't go some? How can we can't live? <laughs> so anyway, it's too much. It's too much. So that's all. I'm just um plans for travel. Um, I'm still chronically single. I don't know what's gonna happen with that. I am moving this year because right now, as we speak, I'm smelling cigarette smoke again from the person upstairs. <laughs> and. I just, you know, I want to be in a safer place. And you know what else? The washer in our building is broken. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I need a place with my own washer dryer. I need to be able to go wash my own stuff when it's time. I'm not having to drive around town to get quarters and then come back home to a broken machine. So tired of it. 
And it's like, are there any adults in this building anywhere? Like, we all live here. Did you all call? Because the number's on the machine. If it's broken, please call this number. Anybody freaking call? No. So anyway, so I tried to go wash my clothes and I couldn't because the machine's broken. Good times. Now I can go in here and hand wash a few things and then throw them in the dryer. The dryer works, but the washer's broken. And then tomorrow's the holidays. So I don't even know if they're going to come tomorrow. So they're probably going to come Tuesday, but whatever. So I either go to the laundromat or my friend's house. I'm going to ask her, see if I can do it. See if she says yes. Um, and my, my goal this year is to get a second dog. Because maybe if I have two, the little idiot boy in here will stop screwing up my house. You know, it don't matter how many times I take him out to pee. It don't matter how many times I let him out to poop. Sometimes I come onto a clean house, and sometimes I come to a poopy, poopy peed up house. And I'm so tired of smelling my home smell bad. I got renewed this to plug ins everywhere, trying to cover the shit. I'm always scrubbing the rug and vacuuming it up. Because, Mr. I have separation anxiety, don't like being alone. So then somebody was like, well, what if you get another dog and they have separation anxiety too? And he, and it's worse. I'm like, you right. But it's like, I don't know. At this point, maybe if he had a buddy and they were together, he wouldn't feel so alone. So my job is, my my goal this spring slash summer is to get another dog with the dog I have. So I'll be a dog mom of two. I'm excited for that. See how that goes. See if I can handle it. Oh. Uh, just to be happy, to be healthy, to make more money, to travel more, to continue to love on my family and friends and my pets. And, you know, you never know what life. Maybe life will bring me a partner this year or next year. I don't know. It does get kind of difficult because you don't want a bad partner. Like, I'm happy to be single to not have a bad partner in my life. But then when I, when I see people who have really good loving partners, I know I'm missing something. So it will be nice to have that. So I'm now at 27 minutes and um, I don't know, leave a question, leave a comment. Um, again, I'm on Instagram, Black Teachers Matter, 535455. I'm also on threads. I am on Facebook, but all the people that know me here know how to get me on Facebook. Um, you can't, you can't request me on Facebook. I don't, I don't allow it. I don't allow Facebook requests. So I have that on and I don't do it. I don't know. I try to keep my Facebook as private as I can. But um uh follow me on TikTok, Diaries of a Black Teacher. A lot of good a lot of good conversations over there we've been having. And um just love you and thank you for listening. And I would keep going, but why? <laughs> so just wanted to get on and say hey, because I don't I don't, I don't do YouTube as much as I should anymore. And I should, I should, I should, I should get back into, I really keep saying every, every, every summer that I'm going to really get back into, you know, the content creating and do better with it. And, and I don't, so. Love you all. Thanks for listening. I'm now at 28 minutes and 20 seconds. So I'm going to let it go here. Bye.